Hello, welcome to the first part of my guide about how to set up your LEDs for your games console. You may have seen the video I posted on Reddit or NeoGAF or various other places. Um, and quite a few people have asked how I made it and if I could make a, a sort of guide, a beginner's to guide. Now, that's not exactly what I'm going to do. There are some other guides out there, um, but they weren't entirely relevant to what I actually wanted to use the lights for. Um, so here we are, I'll make my own. First of all, I'm just going to show you through the things that we're going to need for the uh, for the setup. I actually bought my kit from a website called library.eu. I'll post the link um, in the video, probably underneath it. Um, there are other alternatives available. I think there is another LED system called the Light Pack, which was on Kickstarter, which you can buy. Um, but I bought my kit from Library and that contained most of the stuff that I needed to do it. Um, the things that I will need to do it are an HDMI to composite adapter so that uh, takes an HDMI input and turns it into a composite output which is the little yellow adapter type thing here which you quite often get with old games consoles. Don't worry we're not converting your nice 1080p console into composite, I assure you. We've got an HDMI splitter that takes one input from the back of your console and turns it into two. Just got a little male-to-male -male RCA or Fono adapter there. An 8 gigabyte SD card. My phone keeps auto-focusing. Let's try and stop it doing that. And just here we've got a USB video capture stick. This one has both composite and S video on it. It's only the composite that we're going to be using for the time being, unless I figure out a way to get the S video working. Um, on the end here we can see we've got a Raspberry Pi computer and then we've got a selection of other cables and adapters. We've got an HDMI cable which we will need I've just got a very short one here. You'll also need an extra second HDMI cable, probably a little bit longer. So just to repeat, you'll need two HDMI cables on top of what you normally have within your setup. Network cable, which we will need um, certainly during the install, but if you're wanting to make use of the web app um, so you can control your lights from your phone or your laptop, then you'll want to have it connected to your network all the time. We've got some USB cables there, so it's a USB to micro um, USB and just a regular USB phone charger there, I'm using an iPhone one. Over here I've got a, I think that's a mini USB, which is the slightly bigger one, and another um, USB charger. Um, I'll use those to power the extra devices. Now, this is quite difficult to do one-handed so I'm going to do my best to try and assemble this in the correct fashion using only my left hand. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the yellow adapter there plugging into the yellow adapter there from the USB video capture device. The USB video capture device is going to go into the Raspberry Pi so we've got a little chain already. HDMI cable. It's going to come out of one of the inputs from the HDMI splitter, like so. And then the HDMI cable is going to go into the HDMI to AV adapter. This is very tricky one handed. There we go. So let's just pull this out there, just so you can see. Come on. There we go. So as you can see, HDMI splitter round there into the HDMI to composite, composite into the USB stick, and then the USB stick into the Raspberry Pi. And that is the uh, the bulk of it. There's obviously these other various power cables, which are going to be fairly self-explanatory, but I'll just explain them anyway. 
we've got uh, on here you've got an HDMI adapter which we can use to connect the Raspberry Pi straight to a TV but we won't be using that. On the other end here just on this side we've got a little USB um, micro USB even so that's one of the power connectors so you will need to power up the, the Raspberry Pi with your cable and a charger USB stick doesn't need anything. The second item that probably will need the power is the HDMI to composite adapter. That one, or my model, uses a micro USB, so I will be plugging that in there. Which again, you'll be able to power that from um, a USB hub or something else as well if you really wanted to. And then the HDMI splitter just over here, that's got its own um, power adapter which came with it. Um, but that is the bulk of the stuff that's going to be doing the work. Okay, so now we've got the parts assembled together. I'm just going to connect this other little box that I haven't mentioned yet. But this camp came, or this comes, or came with my um, LED lights from Lightbury. This just is the controller, and uh, I believe that probably distributes the power to the lights as well. Um, so this, I have a little. Um, connector here and that's going to plug into the Raspberry Pi. Now this will need to go a very particular way so just look at your instructions. I'm hoping I've plugged it in the right one. So that's the uh, the red cable on the far side of pins of the pins nearest to the yellow composite adapter there. So that's coming out there. That focus this little adapter actually plugs directly into the uh, the lights which are already attached to my television. So I'm just going to bring you over here and we're just going to have a look at it. It's very dark down here so let's see what we can see. So as you can see there I've got all the LED lights stuck all the way around the edge of my TV along with some cables and some other stuff, some dust. So what came with my set is you probably can't see it. There is some Velcro, some Velcro strips which um, I just cut to length and I just literally st stuck them on there, self adhesive, and they stick all the way around the outer edge of the TV. When you're attaching that, you want to make sure they're not covering, that the Velcro isn't covering any um, vents of your television um, for two reasons. One is you don't want your expensive television to overheat and blow up and set on fire or anything like that to the actual self adhesive strips do melt a little bit from time to time not the strips themselves but the glue melts so we'll start to come away and then what we get is we get a, a cable with all these lights attached to it and each one of those lights has its little velcro patch on the back of it as well so I can actually pull these off and reposition them as I need to so if we just come down to the television, so this is my television here, and I've got the bottom uh, left hand corner of my screen which is nearest to my power points. I've got my string of LEDs which will come off here. The very very first one on the string is in the bottom left hand corner of my screen. At the back, stuck there, it's a bit messy here, there's the one there, one there, and it just keeps on going around bit by bit. Ignore some of the odd ones which aren't meant to be there. Um, and basically you want them evenly spread all the way along the back of the television. Stamping on things. All the way down the back. So wherever you've got a, uh, a light at the top, for example, you want one in the same place on the bottom of the screen, ideally. So it all needs to be nice and symmetrical, nice and even because the software that drives the lights is assuming that these are all even and in, are in very particular places so um, it will be more difficult to configure and set up if it's um, if they're unevenly spaced or if they don't match the lights on the other side of the television. Okay so what I've done now is I've um, carefully placed those cables in this cable tidy box. You don't have to do this but there are a lot of cables um, so you're probably going to want some way to keep them all neat, but I've just got a, a gangplank and I've kind of shoved everything in there. Um, I guess the remaining parts I haven't shown you plugged in. We've got the little adapter there that connects the uh, 
lights power supplies to the actual light ribbon itself which is going up to what's attached to my TV. The HDMI splitter we plugged in one of the outputs which goes through into the USB grabber. We want the second output to go between your actual television and the HDMI splitter and then the final one which is the the input that needs to come out of the back of your games console so that's the one that's connected to my Xbox One. So uh, we will need to get back in here shortly. Um, that is pretty much uh, everything plugged in. Um, hello, my cat's come to say hello. Um, now uh, you're probably going to want to see stage two, which is the actual configuration and the setup of the SD card and the software, which we call Hyperion. So. I will do that next step as soon as I can. But I hope that gives you a little bit of insight towards the um, the not much complexity that's involved with setting up the, the lights. Um, right, I'll see you in my next video.